Let's talk the basics of power stations. What up, I'm I from Ask God Solar, where I like to keep solar simple, and I want to get into the basics of what a power station is. Some people call them solar generators, and eh, you know, whatever. <laughs> a power station is basically an all-in-one portable power station. It has everything you need in the device with the exception of the solar panel. It's relatively simple to be honest with you, but I know that that's me talking. I've been kind of consuming these things for the last 18 to 24 months. So, you know, maybe I have some, <laughs> maybe I have some power station privilege. <laughs> I was thinking about which power station I would use to demonstrate and I kind of wanted something that had some polish and that was kind of light. And I went with something that did not have light pole batteries because I need to be able to lift it up like this repeatedly. So I went with the Jackery, the Jackery 300, which I believe is the best power station that they make. I'm just going to keep it 100. Let's just deal with the, the components really quickly. At the heart of a power station is the battery, the battery itself. That's all this device is. It's a big old battery with these components wrapped around it that allow it to work as a solar generator or a portable power station that can take in power from the sun. You have the battery, you have a built-in MPPT charge controller on most of them. Some of them have the older, less efficient PWM. I'm not going to get into that, but most of them have MPPT. MPPTs are better. They can better negotiate the voltage between the solar panel, the power coming in from the sun and giving it to the device or the batteries at a very good rate. These things can typically be charged three ways. They can be charged from their respective AC adapter. Most of them can be charged from a included 12 volt to this type of connection or whatever type of connection is relevant for your power station. And they can be charged from the sun. That's important to know. There's three ways. Usually your solar panel goes into an input like this. This one happens to be an eight millimeter input. Um, most power stations come with the MC4 to its respective device input. Jackery does not because they want you to buy them panels. So they just, you know, they don't give you one. These AC ports are not typically a three prong, a true three prong outlet. They typically just have a hole for the prong to go into. Another thing you want to be mindful of with these portable power stations is most of them have what we like to call pass through charging, which means you can have your solar panel come into the port and put power into the battery. And if this battery has enough charge in it, or you're typically using less than the power that's coming in, you can also pull power out of these various receptacles when it's getting power. Most of the ports that are on a portable power station are DC. It's this thing over here that makes things kind of interesting. And this is like at the heart of why we all love power stations is because you can take power from the sun or from the wall, put it into something like this, and then have this AC adapter, which is very close to the power that you get from the wall. That's this AC inverter. So the basics that are going on here, the power that's coming in from the sun and going into the battery and coming out through these various ports, like your 12 volt, your USB ports, even some power stations have other barrel ports like 5521. Those are all DC. So you don't run into any problems there. That power can come directly from the battery with no problem. Simply stated. Where things get interesting is this inverter. This inverter kind of takes the DC, kind of, it takes the DC power of the battery and it changes it to AC, which brings us to a very important subject, which is this idea of watts and watt hours. So quite simply, volts times amps is watts. But with regard to portable power stations, whenever you see a watt rating, that is typically related to the inverter. This one is a 300 watt inverter. Now, when you think about the watt hours, that's how much battery capacity this whole thing has. So this is, I think, a 293 watt hour device. That's the difference. It's like you driving down the street, you are going 60 miles an hour. Let's keep it simple. Let's say you're doing, you're going 60. The watt hours is the same concept you are using at that particular moment, let's say 100 watts, and you can use 100 watts for on this particular power station, let's just keep it simple and say three hours. 
the AC does some inversion so you don't get all of that power. You typically lose about 15%. So the watts is what kind of power your power station can deliver in an instant. And then how long it can deliver that power is determined by the watt hour capacity. So let's say you have a 300 watt hour capable device and you want a common example is a 100 watt light bulb, but typically we're not using those. So let's just say, uh, let's say a 100 watt fan, a fan that uses 100 watts. You can typically just generically speaking, use that fan for three hours because it's using 100 watts. That measurement is basically telling you if it runs for an hour, that fan will have consumed 100 hours. So that's the difference between watts and watt hours. Watts is what you are instantly getting at that moment. If you run it for an hour, that's how they measure it. And then you compare that to the watt hour capacity of your portable power station. If you want to be kind of go up a little bit, let's say you have that EV150. It has a 1500 watt hour capacity battery and it has a 1000 watt inverter. So you can kind of see the difference there. So let's say you take an air conditioner that uses 500 watts. If you're paying attention, how long can you run that air conditioner on that inverter because it has 15 watt hours of capacity? Without getting into the inverter inefficiency, you can run it for about three hours. Real talk, you can probably run it for a little over two hours because you lose that 15%. With regard to the watts in the inverter, there's this thing called surge. It has the ability to surge up to a certain point. So let's say with this one, I think this one can surge up to like 500 watts. And that just means for a few seconds, maybe like five to eight seconds or even shorter. I'm not sure. I'm not an electrical engineer. <laughs> Don't quote me on that. But that's what that's about. But you typically have to use something that uses less power than this device can provide. So you don't want to put anything more than 300 watts on this inverter. Otherwise, it'll turn off because it has protections in it to stop it from providing more power than it can output. You can also get into the chemistry of these devices. They have a certain type of battery type inside. A lot of them have lithium ion, but then some of the new ones have what's called lithium iron phosphate. The lithium iron phosphate is less volatile <laughs> than lithium ion. It can charge for more cycles than the lithium ion. Lithium ion typically does about 500 cycles before you lose the top 20% of the battery. So that means 80% of the battery is still going to work and it'll work for a very long time. I can't quantify what a very long time is, but just think about maybe your computer. Your computer lasts you for a few years. That battery doesn't hold as much charge as it did before, but it still holds some charge for a good bit of uh, time. Lithium ion is a little more volatile. I mean, if you don't have protections in the power station, like a lot of mainstream power stations do, then you could possibly run into an issue where something catches on fire or the battery has an issue or whatever. It's also lighter in some instances, not by much, but it's a little bit lighter. So with regard to these and solar panels, like I said, most power stations typically come with their respective MC4 adapter. The MC4 is the connection type on most solar panels. Some solar panels have different types of connector types. I will talk about that in the solar panel video that I'll do next. But all you need is to get a solar panel, which has the proper connector type, <laughs> and then plug it into your portable power station and then it'll start to receive power. That's an oversimplification because various power stations have different connector types. If you are curious about what to look for in a power station, I made a video about that. Like before you buy a power station, check that video out here. So if you're in a situation where you have a power station and you're wondering, well, can this power this? Can this power this? What you need to do is you need to look into how much power that uses and does it exceed the watt rating of this inverter? A lot of people will say, I want to power my refrigerator and my deep freezer and so on and so forth but they don't know how much their refrigerator and their deep freezer uses. Typically on these smaller devices, you will not be able to power them because your freezer spikes or surges in wattage. And that surge is typically higher than the power that these inverters can output, which is called watts, right? Another question that's typically asked of these power stations is people want to run heat from them. Your typical heater uses 750 watts or 1500 watts of power per hour, right? You with me? So this thing has a 300 watt inverter. It cannot power a heater. It will not be able to produce that 750 watts. It will not be able to produce that 1500 watts. And even if it could, it only has a 300 watt hour battery. 
so it couldn't even provide the power for long enough to run it for an hour. I hope that doesn't confuse people, but if you refer back to what I said, the difference between watt and watt hours, watts is that instant use and watt hours is how long it can sustain that use. So these boxes basically have everything you need inside of them except for the solar panel. You need to buy your own solar panel. You need to make sure that that solar panel will be compatible with this device. And then nine times out of 10, you probably want to get an extension cable so that you can get some distance between your solar panel and this power station. But you don't even need that. If you live in a moderate temperature climate, then you could just throw this behind your solar panel and get some power. In an upcoming video, I'm going to be talking about what my idea of the best budget power station is at the moment, the best beginner friendly power station, which is kind of like it has a good bit of power, some good bit of features. So you'd be happy with your purchase. And then the best beastie power station. If you enjoy this type of content, feel free to subscribe. If you have any questions, ask them below. I try to answer as many questions as I can. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up. This is I've holla.